There we go. Full control of mainland China. Over two and a half million men on volunteer only recruitment. We have 98 civilian factories ready to build whatever you could need. We have 93 military factories pumping out all the equipment you could possibly need to equip an army. And 16 dockyards and growing to build that navy to take the fight to Japan. At this point, you can go wherever you want. 1943, game still young. You can take this China anywhere. But first, if you like this video, leave a like in the comments, consider subscribing, and check out my channel for more of these guides. Now, on to the video. Welcome back, folks. Bitter Steel here with another guide for Hearts of Iron 4. Today, we're taking a look at an unusual but very interesting nation, Manchukuo. This Japanese puppet has the potential to be a global superpower, but only if we can get the Japs off our backs and Chiang Kai-shek out of China. Now, a word of warning before we dive in, depending on how Japan does against China, this playthrough could take well into the 1940s, so be prepared for a long one. There is also a few achievements associated with this, and following along with the guide, you should be able to get these as well. Now these would be the good, the bad and the weird, having max level infrastructure in your starting lands and produce 15 oil. Hail to the Qing, finish the final focus, claim the mandate of heaven. And the dragon swallowed the sun, annex Japan without ever being in a faction. Now that said, let's dive right in, let's set to Iron Man, historical mode and go. As you can see, Manchukuo is in a very sorry state. We have several negative modifiers, not to mention our industry. We have the one civilian factory, which isn't even available to us. We have just the one military factory and resource wise, we're not that much better off either. However, we can turn things around. Starting with our focuses, we're going to go straight into pacify the countryside. Now in preparation for this focus to finish, we are going to take our entire army and convert all of these units into the Boobing Shi template. This is your smaller template and we will recruit roughly nine more of those with a high priority. Why? Because we are going to need them for the decisions, pacify the countryside. We are going to choose the pacification instead of the eradication as this will lead us to have a few more units and with the bandits pacified we won't have to suffer any more bandit raids. Now if we force deploy all the units that we're recruiting and put them in the appropriate areas we should only have to suffer one bandit raids event. Now the appropriate areas are Jeho to the west, Heilungkiang to the north and Sungkiang to the east. Six divisions in every one of these areas should do. After we finish our decisions, we'll also have 30 army experience, meaning we can tinker with our templates. Production wise, all factories, well, factory, but anything new is going to go towards infantry equipment. So we are able to squeeze out every gun we can. We will be adding artillery and other stuff eventually for some more added punch, but first off guns. Construction wise, we don't have access to any factories yet, but in preparation for the time that we do, just queue up a few already. Next up, research. We only have the two slots, so we have to make them count. We'll go with electronic engineering with one slot and the second one on general industry, but avoid picking construction for the time being until you have a few civilian factories that actually do construction. Otherwise, this will be a waste of time. Now, with all that done, all that's left to do is set the speed to four, sit back and relax. Later. With the country pacified, we will move down to trade delegation, expand the textile industry and law university for that extra research slot and some civilian factories. And then straight into assertiveness, freeing up more of our factories because we become a puppet instead of what we're now. And this will also allow us to deny any calls to arms the Japanese will have when they start their war with China. And as units become available, start using the pacification decisions. As you can see, we will have to suffer one bandit raids but the other ones should be finished before the second timer for bandit raid starts. And to that end, keep force deploying your units. Industry wise, we'll focus on dispersed. It's simply the best choice for a country like Manchukuo. For our first batch of political power investment, pickings are rather slim. I suggest just going for the industrial concern, uh, the steelworks for that 15% research boost. 
Our second batch of political power is going to be spent on the infantry equipment designer, the Mukden Arsenal. Our troops will need all the help they can get, and the faster we get that equipment out there, the better. If we're caught up on electronic engineering, like here, just start devoting that research slot to help out with construction and general industry. And with our third research slot available, let's throw those into the weapons and equipment here. Now that the countryside is pacified and we can start freely using our equipment, let's start training some troops. But first, we're going to take the division designer and create a new template. Simply anything that's... you can name it whatever you want. I like calling this the fodder. It's gonna have one infantry battalion in it. And we're gonna spam this out. About 36 should do. I'm going to recruit these at a high priority. Second thing we're going to do is take the second infantry template, the Kujun. This is your bigger one. And expand this up to 20 width. So it's actually decent in combat. This is what we will be changing our other fodder template to once they're deployed. As more experience becomes available, I suggest also expanding the cavalry up to 10 combat width. You can get more experience by simply training your divisions. Now to organize your army, use some fallback lines. Set one full army to concentrate on the Japanese front. Use a second army that we will be filling up to about half to focus on the front with Mankukuo. And then use the last army, which we will be filling up to 24 as well. These will be cavalry divisions because we will need their speed to rush down into Korea. So these templates will later on be converted into what we need them to be. And simply force deploy the fodder. They need no training, we'll change their templates anyway. Now with assertiveness out of the way, let's double pack and pick up some Japanese settlers for some extra civilian factories and follow this up with request control of the railways, which will give us access to some decisions that give us free or virtually free building slots. Now that all of this fodder has been deployed, let's organize them in such a way that you have a 24 unit army on the Japanese front about 12 units on the front with Mankukuo, and the rest of the fodder will be concentrated on the Korean border. These will be converted into the cavalry template. The full army on the Japanese front will be converted into our 20 with combat with template, and the ones on the border with Mankukuo will remain as they are, and later on we can convert them as well. We'll recruit nothing else from now on, just focus everything into reinforcing these troops and converting them into their proper templates. Our third batch of political power should be used on the army logistics expert, reducing our attrition from the training. Now, with request control of the railways done, check your decision tab and see here, divert machine tooling. For 90 days and 50 political power, we will get a civilian factory as basically free so keep clicking this every 90 days. As for focuses, five equal peoples it is. Now the order of our next focuses is going to be bolster nationalism, followed by purge the general affairs council, and then finally into empower the legislative council. This way we will get a nice chunk of political power at the same time we reach 50% war support, meaning we'll be able to click that war economy instantly. Also after bolster nationalism is done, Consider recruiting the Bandit Remnants in the Decisions tab to give you a few extra units of speedy cavalry to rush down into Korea. Now at this point, Japan will have gone to war with China. Just let them. They'll ask for your help, but we aren't very inclined to help them, are we? So just keep declining their call to arms. We'll stab them in the back as soon as we're ready and they are fully committed. In 1.9.1, Japan tends to do not very great against China, so there probably won't be a very hard push in the north, but have to make sure that we don't engage them until we notice that they're actually fully committed. Now as for research, at this point we are pretty much caught up in tech in both infantry equipment engineering and industry so now might be a good time to start devoting a uh, single research slot to doctrines and i suggest the superior firepower doctrine as being the go-to option here now that we've purged the general affairs council we have access to prepare to seize japanese arm depots keep using this decision as long as you have the command power to do so you can do it about four times 
but keep doing this as long as it will allow you. The more times we click it, the more equipment we'll steal from the Japanese when we declare war on them, and the higher the penalty the Japanese will receive in terms of combat with us. And with the Legislative Council empowered, we can either go for the independence war now, but considering how close Japan is and they're not truly that committed to China. Plus, our army isn't really in any state to fight just yet. Let's go out and get some help from foreign investors instead. Don't forget, this is your time to click the war economy. With foreign investors invited, let's go and kiss up the Germany. We have five factories and infantry equipment now as well. Let's just add uh, just the one to toad artillery so we can start building some of it and keep pumping the rest into guns. Now is also a good time to start adding a theorist, the military theorist. Now since we are ahead of pretty much everything research-wise right now, uh, consider researching support equipment. We don't have to start producing it right away, but it will give us options in the future. With our mission to Germany completed, let's head down here and start on white Russian advisors down into five people armies. And meanwhile, we're improving our relationship with Germany so we can continue down the tree as well. And considering we're still pretty much ahead of time with everything important like weapons and equipment and industry, let's just take a slot and start researching fighters so we might be able to produce them should we find the economic power to do so. From this point on, all of your political power investments should go to improving the military. With the five people armies done, let's get Falkenhausen from Germany. And after that, considering just how badly Japan is doing, we should be able to declare war on them. The People's Volunteer Divisions, these very cheap infantry units that spawn from the five people armies, just assign them to an army. We're going to use them to take Dailan. I'm going to assign Falkenhausen there once he becomes available. 12 seconds later. Now under your decisions, you'll notice execute the plan. You'll see that when we do this decision, we will get about 20,000 units of infantry equipment and 500 units of artillery. Taking that into account with our current stockpile would actually mean we would be well equipped. So we can switch our production around a little, get some more artillery out there, and we can add artillery to our templates as well. In preparation of our war with Japan, take note of where their troops are and position your armies in fallback lines to be able to respond immediately to what they do. Which means garrisoning the border, where you will trigger defensive combat the moment the war starts. Garrisoning the border with Menkukuo, so you can start pushing in and trying to capitulate them as fast as possible to lock out all of these Japanese troops from supply. And taking the ports of Dailan and possibly the one in Hebei, if they haven't lost it to the Chinese yet, because without these troops, the Japanese forces on the mainland will starve. Equally as important, if not more so, Korea. Prepare to have your cavalry push down into Korea hard and fast. It has to be a rush down to at least the narrowest point of the peninsula. Otherwise, the Japanese will simply ferry troops across to the port of Busan and flood into Korea. And with the independence war firing, it's time for some intense micromanagement to get the Japanese off the mainland so you can take on China in peace. With war breaking out, we'll have to take the speed way down and immediately start responding to what's going on. First order of business is making sure that Menkukuo is in this war by simply clicking declare war. Then going right to work, ensuring that all their troops are pinned down to the greatest extent possible. And don't forget to use the decision to execute the plan, giving Japan a massive penalty when fighting against us. Have your cavalry make the required moves to cut off Korea and rush down the peninsula as fast as possible. Take the port near Dailan as soon as possible and don't forget to garrison it and use whatever divisions you have left that are not busy fighting someone or something to mop up the Japanese as quickly as possible. Speed is key in this war. The Japanese won't have much supply and your troops will definitely have the advantage. As for focuses, we're gonna work towards reclaiming the empire so we can head down to the war goals associated with China. Now for training, this will be the time when we wanna train up fresh divisions of our best units. As front lines are cleaned up, like in this case, redivert those troops to taking out Japanese pockets elsewhere in the country. And with Menkukuo capitulated, all the Japanese troops that are left on mainland China without any 
ports they can access will slowly starve and be destroyed easily. In case in your game the Chinese are not this successful or the Japanese have pushed out very aggressively, focus your troops on taking the port cities first as well as capitulating Menkukuo and then solidifying your front lines. Let the Japanese run into your lines after you've cut them off from supply and they will simply tire themselves out and it'll be easy for you to mop up. When pushing into Korea, Focus on encircling the units that Japan is starting to send in so you can destroy them immediately and keep moving forward. Don't get bogged down in trying to push their lines. The option to raise the banners gives you a few divisions of relatively high quality infantry that you can assign to whichever army needs the most help and they'll be very handy in cleaning up leftover pockets. Now with ourselves and China mopping up northern China and clearing the Japanese out of there and us holding them busy in Korea, uh, whatever naval invasions Japan has made in China should be relatively easy to clean up for them. Uh, once those are pushed off and we have made enough gains in Korea, the surrender event will fire. A few moments later. There we go. Japan offers peace. This gives us two options. Either we conclude the war here, which will result in them giving up everything they had on the continent to us or China, whoever controls it, as well as releasing Korea as an independent country. We can simply annex Korea afterwards with a easy invasion, or we continue this war. This has both up and downsides. If we end the war here, we won't have to bother with Japan until we are powerful enough after unifying China to simply invade them. However, if we do that and Japan has signed the tripartite pact, that will pull Germany into the war because Germany will have a guarantee on Japan. If we continue the war, however, we will need to spend significant resources on constantly garrisoning our ports and cleaning up naval invasions. However, Germany will not be a problem because the guarantee does not work backwards. Meaning, since we are already at war with them before the guarantee went in, we can simply conclude our war with Japan without Germany ever getting involved. So this choice is really up to you. I prefer to simply call it a game here, take the continent and then focus on China and I'll come back for Japan later on. We'll be more than powerful enough to take on the Axis at this point. So we're gonna click here, the war has been won. Now one thing to note in 1.9.1 is Korea is a broken mess. As you can see here, we cannot justify a war goal on any of their provinces and that is very simple because we still occupy Korea. The game thinks we still control Korea, we still get the manpower from it, we still get the factories from it, and we still get the resources from it. For all intents and purposes, Korea is Qing China. It just says Korea on the map right now. Now, if you're playing this in a patch where they fix this bug, the solution is simple. You justify a war goal, invade them, annex them, simple as that. By the time you're done with your justification, they shouldn't have more than one or two divisions. You simply walk in and take their lands. With Japan off the continent, we can finally turn east and divert our attention to China. We're gonna use this breathing room to improve our template, meaning we'll prepare a 7-2 division template, seven infantry, two artillery, 20 width. We will be recruiting those from now on. And to get that done, we will be shifting our industry towards producing more artillery but be sure not to neglect the basics like support equipment and guns. Artillery works wonders against the Chinese as they mostly field straight pure infantry divisions, so soft attack annihilates them. We're also gonna work our way down, reclaim the empire. After it's done, we'll offer vassalization to the warlords. This will make our trip into China that much easier. It does mean that we have to annex those warlords who decide to join us through the puppet mechanics later on. So be sure that you have together for victory if you wanna choose that path. And depending on which warlords join us, we will need to adjust our front lines accordingly. There is no way to be sure which warlord accepts. There is no one way to continue, but the overall tactics will always be the same. We try to encircle and destroy as many Chinese divisions as we can, either one at a time or large pockets, seize opportunities by pinning down units and plunging faster units like the cavalry into those gaps and getting the encirclements. We're gonna be focusing at first on taking the Chinese industrial centers along the coast and slowly pushing on without overextending our front lines too much. We'll be doing it very slowly, very steadily. Now that we have offered the warlords vassalization, let's check out which ones have decided to join us. So it turns out two have submitted, Mabu Fang 
and Lun Long Yun. That is the Yunnan Free Empire and Sibei Sanma. Not the greatest to join us, but still pretty okay. Those borders will draw troops to them that we otherwise would have to fight. As for focuses, we will be taking Imperial Divinity followed by Imperial University. After that, the choice really depends on the situation. If you're doing fine on land, consider sending a mission to the US to get access to some ship technology and fighter technology. If you need more factories, consider sending a mission to Germany for additional military factories and some bonuses to the army. Now that we know which warlords are going to join us and who will not, we can start working on our strategy. Since Shang-Chi is not on our side, we can't close the gap here. That would be ideal to cut off all those Chinese divisions. However, we can still do some encirclements in the north and prepare to push towards the rivers in the south, overwhelming these uh, inferior Chinese divisions at the start of the war. And to start our war, we simply declare war on one of the warlords who has refused to join us and they should pull China in with them. Put the speed way down and we're going to war, boys. <laughs> So in about three months time, we've made significant progress and really hit the Chinese hard. They're hurting. Our troops are simply better equipped and of higher quality. We just need to keep the current pace up, strike at the industrial heart and just encircle and destroy. Now that we finished the Imperial University, we can also get the research and education department. This is because we now have more than 50 factories, having taken quite a few of them from China. If you're not at this point in your playthrough, that's okay. You can always go with closer ties with Germany for more civilian factories that leads down to the tank plant for more mills and the US for some shipping by the time you're ready to take on Japan. 
After a few months of encircling and destroying Chinese divisions, you'll start noticing that they don't really have the manpower or the troops in the field required to fill their entire front line with you as you're moving along the coast. And at the same time, they're still wasting a lot of the troops that they do have, just garrisoning the borders with your puppets, even though those puppets aren't in the war. So just exploit that, create those gaps, just dive in with your fast units like your cavalry and create more encircling because every pocket you destroy that's a unit they're not going to replacing soon because you're taking their factories and you're destroying their equipment if by this point you've secured the province of Beijing well why not move your capital there now if you're caught up on tech regarding your industry and your military equipment might not be a bad idea to start looking at some submarines or at least the transports to get yourself to Japan eventually to get the warlords involved in the final peace deal when you finally kick China's ass, make sure you capture at least one of their tiles. So take one from every warlord that's not uh, capitulated by the time you manage to get China to its knees. Every now and then you'll see China make a massive counterattack. This is the time to just stop attacking and just focus everything you have on reinforcing those red bubbles that pop up rotate units in and out of combat use the last stand if you have to this is actually an excellent opportunity because once these attacks stop they, they can't support these they don't have the equipment and most of their troops are already on low organization once those attacks stop that's your time to make an immediate counterattack and benefit from their loss of entrenchments and their loss of organization Now, as you can see, our lines are starting to reach the limits of what we can extend to. So if you find yourself in a situation like this with rather uh, too few troops to keep up the pressure, just work on shortening the front lines as much as possible. For instance, what I'm going to do here is try and collapse Shangxi and Communist China so that I can then shorten all this line down to this small bit here and then I can push into China because Sibei Sanma is my own vassal. Don't have to worry about them. And Xinjiang can't get anywhere because they're blocked off by a vassal that is not in the war. Basic principle here is simply extend the line if you have more troops than the enemy. So you have gaps to pour into. If you notice that your lines are coming too long, just focus on contracting them again so you can use your troops effectively without risk of an enemy breakthrough or getting your own troops encircled. If research slots allow you and you're caught up on all your other tech, consider investing in naval bombers as well. These will help tremendously with getting rid of the Japanese Navy by the time you're ready to invade. A few moments later, now at this point, you'll start noticing a very great deal of these Chinese divisions, including their puppets, will be under strength. They won't have the industrial base anymore to replenish their losses, let alone recruit new troops, because at this point, we control the industrial heartland of China. Now you could start an all-out push and capitulate them relatively quickly, despite still taking significant losses yourself. If you do that, just be aware that before China capitulates, make sure to take at least one province from everyone in their faction. Otherwise, they will not be included in the peace deal and you'll have to fight them separately, which is not a big deal unless those countries are Communist China or Xinjiang. If Xinjiang or Communist China are not included in the peace deal and you declare war on them after, they could end up joining the Soviet Union. Now, if you're considering pulling one of your subjects into the war, one idea is to at least request their forces so you can set up front lines for them in places that make sense instead of relying on the AI to do it. We all know the AI is not that great. Two hours later. And with that, we have defeated China and its allies. Now, if in this peace deal, Japan is also involved because they have somehow managed to rejoin the war with China, focus on taking land that is coastal or that adjoins Japanese territory first. That way the AI will be less inclined to take land. Also, the land you control will be way too expensive for Japan to ever take, especially if they don't have a lot of war score because you managed to push hard at the start. So let's just start taking some land from China. There we go. 
We now control almost all of mainland China. For our achievement, Hail to the Qing, we will need to complete this focus, claim the Mandate of Heaven. And to do that, we need to simply integrate our puppets Xibei Sanma and the Yunnan Free Empire. To integrate these, the easiest way to do so is to simply send them a lot of Lend-Lease equipment. Convoys are especially useful for this, for the count for a lot. And just build things in their territory that will benefit you as well, such as infrastructure. While we do that, we can prepare for our war with Japan by garrisoning our borders, focusing on building a strong air force and submarines, and preparing some naval invasions. 2,000 years later. Now, for some reason, Japan may declare war on either you or some of your vassal states. Don't really understand the reasoning behind it, but at this point it shouldn't really matter. You have full control of the mainland, you have a powerful military, uh, you should have more than enough troops to garrison your ports. And with Japan declaring war on us, that really takes the guessing out of it. We won't have to worry about Germany at all. So now it's just a matter of capitulating Japan so we can annex them. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. There we go, we've claimed the Mandate of Heaven. We are the Chinese Emperor. You can see he has his fancy getup now, Xuantong. Military! We have 93 military factories. They can produce whatever you'd want from this point onwards. Civilian factories in 95, I think those will do for all your needs. Resource-wise, not looking too bad either. From this point onwards, all you really need to do is capitulate Japan. It's a matter of building up submarines and naval bombers to give you the required naval superiority to make a naval landing crush them you have way more and much better troops than them at the peace conference if you're not sure that you have the required points to take all of japan the core territory japan has start out by puppeting them and then giving all of the cores to that puppet it's much cheaper and that way you probably will not have to fight the allies at the end of the day if you do well Considering the size of your country and the resources at your disposal, it will take a long time, but you are perfectly capable of doing this. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. It's been a bit of a long one, but I had a lot of fun making it. If you want to see more of these videos, more of these guides, hit that subscribe button, leave a like, tell me something in the comments, what country you want to see next, or if you want to see me try an achievement or get a guide out for that. I would love to hear that from you guys. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Also tell me in the comments what you would like to see changed. I'm always open to some more feedback. I hope to see you in the next video. This has been me, Bittersteel. Love you guys. Bye.